There's me and dad. No, that's him, the baby. <laughs> oh, there's me. He's a good one, but look how big. Ariel's nose looks. And I look blind. What? No, you don't. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. Hey, there's me again. That's Joy. That's how you. Okay, wait. Who's Joy? I've never met Joy. How come. I'm Dorothy Flynn. And I'm Paul Flynn. And our daughter, Jennifer, has schizophrenia. Jennifer was um, a very active and social young lady. Uh, even as a child, everyone liked her. Uh, she was a high achiever through all the way through school, trying to do her best. She was a beautiful young lady with a great deal of promise, um, and we were so very proud of her. <laughs> so what are some daily things you like to do? Sweep the front porch, laundry, bath, eat, sleep, drink, be merry. Um, do you have a job? No. Uh, if you had to pick a job, what would your dream job be and why? Report the news on the television. Didn't you because get... I like the weather, season changes. Yeah, didn't you go to College Park for journalism? A little, yeah, but I didn't complete it. I'm behind. I don't think Jennifer could ever accept that she could have schizophrenia or any kind of mental illness because it it has such a negative connotation in the world and how could she have that when she had worked all her young life to be so perfect and to achieve so many things uh, what was college like what were the experiences good or bad or both well at first they start out good but then they get bad even worse and the worst happens and there's nothing left to do but fall succumb. She has never been able to accept her illness fully. She knows something's wrong, but she has not been able to accept it. That has, that's really harmed her in getting some of the help that she needs because there are some programs that she could be part of that she won't. She won't participate in because they're they have mental illness because they're, you know, they're like that. And, it, and she can't accept that she is like that as well. My worst boyfriend is Jesus. He died. Oh. But Christ dresses and Christ dresses Paul. Now we were all Christ dressed oh, no. in Charles I, County, maybe the world. I went on a European tour. Well, Christ dressed. Do you like <laughs> <do you> like <laughs> and I went around, he was Christ dressed. And, yeah, I think the whole world grocery stores. Jennifer was always resistant to um, accepting any kind of treatment. And so when she would have a break with reality, when her, uh, when she needed hospitalization, she would refuse to go. So we would have to go to the courts and go through the legal procedure and fill out paperwork, go in front of a judge, and have him order um, involuntary um, admission. Admission. And then the judge would sign it, and then the police would come out to the house. And then we'd have a struggle because the police would have to uh, restrain her again. Usually it took three policemen to do that. And they would uh, put her into the uh, police car and then take her to the hospital. And then we'd go visit her at that particular hospital. What was Shepherd Pratt like? I know you hated it, but why did you hate it? There was no bathtub. There was no bathtub. We had a, a doctor from Southern Maryland Hospital that uh, we would work with him for many years. And I, I remember asking him, I said, can we do any other medication? And he said, no, she's severely ill. I take seven pills per day. Well, what do they do? What's like each one do? Cure me of a broken heart and diseases associated with it. 
none of the doctors that she's seen since she's been out have been willing to change any medication or help her and so she has deteriorated further and that's where it stands right now are we singing okay are you listening to I do. It's been seven hours and fifteen days since you took your love away. At times, out of a day, uh, maybe ten minutes, ten minutes maybe, that things are suddenly on a normal level. And it really gives me hope, but then right after that, she goes back. The one symptom that happens to Jennifer is that she has been frozen in time. Um, she thinks she goes over the old boyfriends, high school, uh, early college, and now this is over 20 years ago and she still recycles that constantly. She's constantly writing in books. I have to buy her notebooks and she writes and writes and writes and it's always the same thing. The thing about her going back and talking about that time, we feel like it's when she had more of a normal life. And she was a regular person and had friends and boyfriends and school and social life. And she wants to be back into that moment, but... Um, it's impossible. It is impossible. Oh wait, what is this? Boyfriends, pages of boyfriends. <laughs> Maybe... Over the years, we've uh, we've learned to live with the situation that we have. We're not happy with it. It's draining us financially and emotionally. And emotionally. But I think I think we don't feel the stigma so much anymore. I'm not hesitant no. to share that my daughter has schizophrenia. Me either. Uh, we did joined NAMI and we shared that with everyone that we could in hopes to help someone else. So um, for us now, it's not a secret. It's not, we're not worried about the stigma at this point, but we know it exists and it can be very um, detrimental to someone that's trying to get help and hey. needs help. And actually people do, family members, uh, if they have it, issues they're going through, they call us and talk to us about uh, what we had to go through to, uh, to get Jennifer admitted to a hospital. Is that it? Yeah.